Once kitted out 1940s style, it was time for Pilot Jordan to take me for a ride. So you probably wondered why we're waggling the, uh, the tail left and right, Hannah. Well, that's largely because I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> the aeroplane sits very nose high, it's a tail dragger, and true to its form, it's dragging its tail, which means the nose is in the air. So to see where I'm going, I've got to steer left and right in order to make sure I don't crash into anything, basically. Bit of a design flaw. Yeah, you could say that. Most <laughs> modern aircraft don't suffer from this problem, but unfortunately we do, so... Uh, We've come a long way in the past few years. <laughs> we seem to have done, yeah. It's a training aircraft, therefore it has to be stable and easy to fly. Even though by today's standards, it's a bit of an uncoordinated pig to fly, unfortunately. But you love it, no? In contradiction to that, the aeroplane is tremendous fun. Can these spin? Can you do tricks? Yeah, they're, they're more than capable, actually. They're a, they're a fantastic aerobatic aircraft. However, unfortunately, due to the age of the aircraft, we like to preserve the aircraft and look after it as much as possible. Therefore, we don't tend to spin these and aerobat them, although they are capable. They're old ladies now. Very much so. I was perfectly content leaving the aerobatics to the younger planes and watching Yorkshire pass by beneath our three quarters of a century old aircraft. Every time you fly this aeroplane, you get the sights, sounds, the smells of the 1940s. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's very humbling experience to think that these guys experienced this and all the beauty that goes with it. Back on the ground and the squadron team are keen to show me the newest addition to the Tiger Moth experience, what was known in wartime as a dispersal hut. Essentially the Germans knew uh, the locations of most of the air bases in the country, so it became important to create alternative locations where both the airmen and their aircraft could be situated and, um, and then they would be ready. These huts could go up in, in a very short time uh, and the, the airmen would be ready to go at a moment's notice. Well, scramble, scramble, scramble. What we're really hoping with the uh, dispersal hut is that when people walk through the door, they really feel as if they are in the 1940s. We've recreated this as much as possible uh, with authentic items from the era. And people are not just turning up for flight, they are turning up to be dressed in the outfit uh, and to feel as though they are one of those young men in 1940s that was about to learn to fly and go off to war. Obviously, we couldn't resist the opportunity for a good dressing up session ourselves. There's no age limit to flying. Since opening, they've had no fewer than five gentlemen in their 90s to visit, one of whom, Peter Carruthers, flew this very aircraft over 70 years ago. And it's not just flights getting underway here. There's movie nights and Lindy Hop lessons for all those craving that 1940s feel. 